All right, and welcome back to the next lecture on section 1.2 on radicals. Radicals, uh, I hope you watched the previous lecture on exponents because radicals really are just exponents. It's no secret, uh, those students tend to forget it quite often. When I write something like the square root of four, or when I think, oh, you know, what is the third root of eight? Um, I'm really just talking about exponentials here. Um, you know, we usually don't write it, but there's a two here. We see the three on the other one. No matter what that is, some nth root of some number b, all of these things have an equivalent form as an exponential. This is four to the one half power. This is eight to the one third power. This last one, which is the general form, is b to the one over n. So now that you see this, I hope you never forget it. <laughs> because you should be able to translate back and forth. We all know what the square root of four is. I hope we know what the third root of eight is. Um, but if not, you just need to think about it in terms of repeated multiplication. What number multiplied together two times gives you four? Two. What number multiplied together gives you, uh, multiplied together three times gives you eight? Two times two times two. Okay. Um, radicals are just exponentials. And so they, they rely on that same property of exponentials that it's just a question of repeated multiplication Right? You're looking for the base that gives you that product overall. Radicals have very much the same rules as the exponentials that we just looked at. Uh, and so we're going to go through these rather quickly because, uh, <laughs> because they're the same. So the first rule is if you have a radical, an nth root of a product, we can distribute the radical. Because, as we already know, this is a to the 1 over n times b to the 1 over n. Oops, I did it already. It, a times b to the 1 over n. And that's just an exponent, like we learned before. So that's a to the 1 over n times b to the 1 over n. And that's no different than just the nth root of a times the nth root of b. It's the first law. So what this says is if you have something like the third root of 24, you can factor that 24 out, right? It's, uh, what is it, three times eight? And we can split that up, the third root of three times the third root of eight. The third root of three, you know, what number multiplied together three times gives you three? Uh, I couldn't tell you the decimal approximation of that. That's an irrational number. But the third root of eight, I do know that's two. So this is just two times the third root of three, which is a little bit more concrete than this. More concrete than this, yes. So this computationally is more efficient to calculate. So that's the first property. And all we did was we used the previous properties we knew of exponentials. The next property, the next law, is what to do with fractions in a, in a root. So the nth root of this tall fraction, a over b, just like with exponentials, we're going to distribute this root. This is the nth root of a over the nth root of b. OK, so this is as an example, third root of 27 over eight. That's the third root of 27 over the third root of eight. What number multiplied three times gives you 27? Three. And we already know the next one is two. So this is three halves. Okay, second rule. The next one uh, is what to do with really scary looking roots like this. The nth root of the nth root of some number. 
don't be afraid. Just remember these are also exponentials. This could be rewritten as the one over mth power of b to the one over m power. In this situation, what do you do? You multiply the powers. So this is b to the one over n times m. Right? You multiply those powers, which is the same as the m times n root of b. Okay. Uh, not going to do an example there. That's uh, sort of a, an interesting thing, but uh, not not so uh, interesting. The next ones, super simple. Super simple. This is like the most important one though for, for simplifying questions, right? It's exactly what you do every time you see something like what we've done already, like this, the third root of eight. Well, eight is equal to two cubed, right? So this is the same as two cubed to the one third power multiply the exponents. Two to the three times one third is one. It's two. So this last one says if you have an nth power exponential underneath an nth root, it what is it? It's A, right? It's, it's just that base. But it is, it is a little trickier than that. Okay, if N is odd, this is true. So I can give you a nice example there. Third root of negative five to the third. That's third root of negative five cubed, right? So the, it's negative five, right? Underneath here, this is negative 125. So you're taking the third root of a negative number. That often causes problems, right? Negatives under radical signs. You start dealing with Im imaginary numbers. But when you've got an odd root, the negative sign survives. Uh, it's the same story with uh, positive underneath with a, uh, uh, an odd root. You still get the base out, just not negative, right? But the story is different when you've got an even root. You need to take the absolute value of that base. So here's, here's the example. I'm going to use a five again. The fourth root of five, sorry, negative five to the fourth. So I'm going to rewrite this real quickly. 125 times five is 625. Five times 100 is 500. Five times 25 is 125. Add the two together, you get 625. So the fourth root of 625, what happened to the negative sign? It's gone, right? Four negatives multiplied together gives two cancellations of negative signs. So you just have the fourth root of a positive number, which has to be a positive number, right? The root function, when it's even, only gives you positive numbers out. And we know what that positive number is. It's five. Because negative five to the fourth is the same as five to the fourth. Rewrite that here. These are the same. The equal signs check out. Negative five to the fourth and five to the fourth are the same number. It's positive 625. So when you take that fourth root, you're going to get the positive result out which is why if you have a positive 
nth root, sorry, an even root, you need to have the absolute value of your base be the root. So the nth root of a to the n is the absolute value of the base if you're dealing with an even root there. Okay. Um, so there's some things that we can do with this. Uh, you'll see lots of example problems. Um, I'm going to just point you back to last semester's videos where I go through uh, dozens of these example problems in some of the first lectures. Um, there's also lots of example problems if from your text. So uh, I'm going to skip ahead to rational exponents. Um, so rational exponents, they're the more complicated version of what we just did. Right? And there's just a quick side-by-side -side comparison. This is what we just did. We talked about the nth root of something and how it's really just uh, an exponential. Rational exponents sort of make this a little more confusing by adding an exponent onto that base again, but not a fraction. Uh, we add something in the numerator. Okay, so we're talking now about something like this, a to the m over n. Now, what is that equivalent to? And there's, there's really two, two possibilities here. There's two right answers, actually. So let me move this down here. A to the m over n. You can think of it two ways. The first I'll do on the left, and the second I'll do on the right. But they are the same numerically. You can think of this as a to the m times 1 over n. Okay. Or you can think about it as a to the 1 over n times m. And the order matters a little bit here, because if you remember what we talked about in a previous like in the previous lecture, I can scroll up here perhaps. I think it was rule right here, number three. That's the eraser, highlighter, rule number three. This left-hand exponent is still on the left here. The right-hand exponent is on the right here. So the right-hand one stays outside of a grouping symbol, the parentheses. So we have to follow the same pattern here because that's the law. That's the thing that we must follow. So on the left, what's this? This is a to the m to the 1 over n. And this is a to the 1 over n to the m. On the left, this is the nth root of a to the m. On the right here, this is the nth root of a raised to the mth power. Small difference in the way we wrote it, uh, caused by simply the order of multiplication but multiplication is commutative, which means that all of these equal signs check out, which means there is a big equal sign right here that is in fact true. The nth root of a to the m is the same as the nth root of a to the mth power. So it's a kind of a powerful way to rewrite, um, to rewrite exponentials. And there's just one thing we need to worry about just one thing we need to worry about here. If n is even, what do we need to have for sure be the case? We need to have a be positive or zero. Because if it's not, what happens here? Now we're taking an even root of a negative number. That's an issue. Okay. If m is not even, then we're going to get a negative number underneath the radical sign on the left side there. And on the right side, it doesn't matter what m is. 
we're still going to get a negative underneath that radical. So we've got some issues here if m and n are not even uh, when a is negative. So we need to make sure we check that one thing. In terms of theory, that's it for section 1.2. With that, you've got everything you need for the first homework assignment on sections 1.2 and 1.3. And just to review, we talked a lot about the different theory, the different uh, laws for exponentials. Um, and we talked about it in very general terms. Uh, and when we made the switch to radicals in the second half, we realized radicals are just exponentials. So all those laws that we did before still apply. So we can just use the exact same things, but now with fractions instead of whole numbers. And we saw a nice application of this, something that's very commonly done in the sciences, scientific notation. So uh, thank you for zooming in. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you're doing well and I'll see you next time.